Now getting to higher energies, we have infrared light. Now infrared light have uh, longer wavelengths than visible light, which is why we can't see them, but shorter wavelengths than microwaves. So the sort of visible light that is closest to infrared light is red. That's why of course it's called infrared. Now it turns out that we can detect infrared light, but not with our eyes. We feel infrared radiation as heat on, for example, our skin. And so we can measure it with thermometers, for example, or thermistors. It turns out that hot objects will glow with infrared light. So you know, of course, that if you heat up an object hot enough, it'll start glowing red hot, which means it's really, really hot. But if you heat it further, it'll become yellow hot, which is even hotter, right? And we can see there that we're progressing from red to orange to yellow, and then we sort of get all of them, so it becomes sort of white hot. But you can see that we're progressing up the electromagnetic spectrum. It turns out that if we're not hot enough to be red hot, then we'll be infrared hot. So a saucepan on a stove, for example, might not be glowing red hot, but if we could see an infrared, we would notice that it was glowing infrared hot. This phenomenon is called black body radiation, and you'll probably learn more about it a bit later. So it turns out that as well as using thermometers or thermistors or our sense of touch, we're able to detect infrared light by using photographic film, which is of course how we get pictures like this taken. So what else is it good for? Well, we can use it for remote controls, for TVs or garage doors or things like that. Uh, we can also use it for short weight range wireless transmission. If we get to fairly long wavelength infrared, we can use it for Bluetooth, for example, which is a way of transmitting information wirelessly. The other thing that we can use it for is night vision. If we have a source of infrared light, so an infrared torch, and we have a camera that can detect infrared light, then it's possible to see in the dark, as it were, by shining a bright infrared light and then using a camera to turn that infrared light into a visible picture that we can see. And so using this, it's possible to navigate around in the dark as if you could see with visible light without making yourself visible to anyone who might be watching. When filming nocturnal wildlife, for example in a nature documentary, visible light can't be used for illumination because it bothers all the nocturnal animals. They think it's nighttime, right? They want it to be nice and dark. But if it's nice and dark, then we can't see them, so we can't film them. How do we solve this problem? Well, the answer is we use a different sort of electromagnetic wave so that we can see in the dark. But what sort of electromagnetic wave should we use? Now, if we use gamma rays or X-rays, then aside from being extremely dangerous, we won't really be able to see subject of the film very well. Because of course, to X-rays and gamma rays, flesh and blood is transparent. Only the bones reflect. So we wouldn't be seeing little nocturnal animals running around, we'd be seeing their skeletons, which as you can imagine, would probably not be very popular in a nature documentary. So what we want to use is something that's very close to visible wavelengths but which cannot be seen. We could use ultraviolet light, but we don't want to sunburn the poor little critters. So instead, we'll use infrared light. We can use infrared light in order to illuminate the scene that we want to film. Now this won't disturb the wildlife because it's not visible light. Some insects and so on are able to see ultraviolet light, but if we use infrared light, then we won't be bothering them either. Uh, then we can use a camera that is sensitive infrared light in order to film the scene. Of course, ordinarily, cameras will film in three colors, red, green, blue, and then uh, give us an image in a visible spectrum, which will be a whole different range of frequencies of light. If we're only filming a single wavelength of infrared light, then we're effectively filming in black and white. But it's better than nothing, I'm sure you'll agree. 